for many kids, at least the kids we work with, this is the hardest part for them is getting going. So we share with them, you know what? You have to trick your brain into thinking that what you're going to do isn't so hard after all. Your brain doesn't want to do things that are hard. Your brain is in self-preservation mode. So if you're on TikTok scrolling from videos, your brain says, oh, this feels good. Let's keep doing it. Writing? No, that's hard, boring, and oh, way too difficult. So here's how you trick your brain. You grab a timer. Here's one of my favorite. It's a time timer. You've probably seen it before, really popular in the ADHD community. I love it because it has this red floating disc that moves with elapsed time. So here's how you use it, or any timer really. And I'd say a physical timer is better than the timer in your phone. So you grab your timer and you say, all right, brain, I'm gonna only make you work for five minutes. I call this one the five minutes of fury, or 10 minutes. I call this tolerable 10. Here's the idea that anybody can tolerate anything for just 10 minutes. So you set the timer for say 10 minutes and you repeat this mantra. I'm gonna work as hard as I can, best as I can, focus as much as I can, just for 10 minutes. And when the timer goes off, I can keep, take a break or I can keep on going. Usually kids can keep on going, they need the timer to get them started. So that's how you start with uh, using a timer to set a very small amount of time and teach kids that mantra. We're always revisiting that mantra with kids. You can do it by task too. So some parents report that their kids are anxious with timers. And if you have a child with anxiety and you've tried this before, I would not push the envelope, do something different. You can do the same thing, but with task. So you say, all right, brain, I don't want to do this entire three paragraph essay. I'm willing to write the first sentence. Does that work for you? So you basically say, I'm going to work as hard as I can, best I can, focus as much as I can just to write this first sentence and I'll take a break. In math, it might look like, oh, I'll do every other problem or I'll just do the first three or I'll start with five of the easiest. That's how you trick your brain to start by task. Now, when we write, before we even get started, we want to make sure our thoughts are organized. That makes getting started so much easier. I think one of the best ways for kids to organize their thoughts is through some visual depiction, like a graphic organizer. So what is a graphic organizer? A graphic organizer is a visual framework that shows relationships between things. So, Let's say the teacher, the English teacher says to your child, all right, listen, Becky, you need to write a compare and contrast essay. That feels overwhelming. I'm not going to do that. And if I do, I'll just slap a few things down on the paper and say I did it. But with a graphic organizer, it's so much easier. Let's say the topic is about elephants and rhinos. So you research what are the main qualities or what are the important things about an elephant what are the important things about rhinoceros? Write that down. And then in the middle of this Venn diagram, you're writing down things that they have in common. Now you have the outline for a three paragraph essay and it is so much easier. You can also help your child by acting as a scribe. So if you have a student who's really struggling to get going and maybe they're not quite at the graphic organizer, but they just need to write down a few sentences, you can be their scribe. This is generally for younger kids, maybe middle school kids. We use this strategy all the time with students just to kind of get them over the hump. So here's how it works. The child speaks. So you say, oh, what would you like your topic sentence to be? Oh, I love that idea. That's so great. Let me write that down or let me type that. How about the second sentence? What about that one? What should it be? Oh, that's a great idea. Write that down or type it down. Now, what are you thinking about the third sentence? What about that one? Love it. Very creative. Awesome. Can you write that one down? So now I've gotten the student over the hump and they're good to go. So the child speaks, you're the scribe, and you type it or you write it to get them going. 